Hello and welcome to an exciting new episode of Talking About Stoicism, where we're going over the moral letters by Lucius and Aeneas Seneca. We're still, we're still so much to go. Uh, we have landed in letter 56, which I thought was an interesting one because it deals, I think, with a very stoic principle. From Seneca to Lucilius, greetings. I swear it, silence is not as necessary to a scholarly retreat as you might think. Here is cacophony sounding all about me, for I am living right upstairs from a bathhouse. Call to mind every sort of awful noise that grates on the ears when the stronger men do their exercises, swinging their hand weights about and straining with the effort or pretending to. I hear the grunts every time they exhale, their rasping and gasping for breath. When I get some idle fellow who's happy with an ordinary man's massage, I hear the hands slapping his shoulders and the change of sound when they strike with cupped hand or with the palm. Then if a ball player shows up and starts counting how many he catches, I'm done for. Now add the quarrelsome type and the one caught stealing and the one who likes to hear himself sing in the bath chamber. And also the ones who jump into the swimming pool with a great splash. Besides all these who are at least using their normal voices, imagine the tweezer man screeching over and over in his shrill falsetto. Falsetto, sorry. Just to attract attention, he is never silent unless he is plucking someone's armpits and makes him cry out instead. Now add the cries of the drink man, the sausage man, the bakery man, and all the different sellers of cooked food singing out their wares in their distinctive tones. You must be made of steel, you say, or deaf to retain your concentration amid so many varied and discordant sounds. Why, our own Crispus was driven to the point of death merely by a constant stream of visitors. Yet for me, in truth, the racket is of no more concern than waves or falling water. I've heard, though, of a race of people who relocated their city solely because they could not stand the tumult of one of the cataracts of the Nile. Okay. Um, he goes on, which I find interesting. I, I, I won't read this entire paragraph, just the first lines. I think a voice is more distracting than any din, for the one engages our mental faculties, the other merely fills the ears with its reverberations. Among the noises that sound around me but do not distract me, I count passing carriages, a carpenter somewhere in the building, or a nearby saw grinder, and that fellow who demonstrates flutes and trumpets near the meta sedans, not so much playing them, as bellowing. Even now, I find noises that recur at intervals more bother bothersome than a continuous drone. Okay, that actually is uh, scientifically a fact. Your senses adapt to something continuous, which is why after a while you don't smell things anymore, or hear things anymore, or even see things anymore. Um, so that's kind of interesting that he notes that that's actually a, a fact. Now, the reason I found this particular letter interesting is that it it connects to one of the, in my mind, very foundational principles of Stoicism, and that is you can make your mind be a fortress. You can make your mind be a place you can retreat into and then be there, live there, and not be bothered and it's hard to do that. It's not an easy thing to do. But the more you do that thing, the easier it tends to become. And there are two, I think, two great examples uh, of this sort of thing. One comes from Epictetus, with whom we started these vi the videos on Stoicism a long time ago. And... It's one of the first chapters in the Enchiridion. It may be four or five, something along those lines. It's, it's early on. And he describes, actually, the bathhouse, right? An important meeting place in Roman, ancient, ancient Roman culture. And he describes how going there will largely be terrible because it has all the potential to upset you. So he describes, think of, and I'm paraphrasing here because I, I don't have the, the quote in front of me, but he describes what you need to do to stay sane there is go in with the expectation that it's going to suck. 
You go in with the expectation of, I will be splashed with water. There will be rude people. There will be noisy people. My items may get stolen. There is all that. And in doing so, you prepare for the worst. Premeditatio malorum in, in Latin, right? Famous Stoic exercise. But, and I have always found that to be an astonishingly effective quote and a true central tenet of Stoicism um, because Epictetus says what you need to do is not only accept that that's what's going to happen but make sort of make make a contract with yourself you say I want to have a bath and act in accordance with nature be at peace right stay calm and if I go there and I have a bath, but I get upset, then I do the one thing, but not the other. And then I haven't been fully true to myself. I wanted to do both things, have a bath and stay calm in the face of all these bad things, obnoxious people that will be there, bad things that will happen to me there, etc. And then I have found an exceptionally powerful, motivating factor. You say this to yourself, I am going to do X, I know this is hard for me, this is a situation where I get frustrated. In my case, certainly used to be the post office, for example, as an innocent example. So I started to do this. I started to make a contract with myself and say, okay, I'm going to go to the post office. Certain things will happen there. I will deal with potentially a long lineup of people who all have complicated problems and will take a lot of time to get the problem sorted out. I may deal with employees who are inept. I have, I have certainly faced ineptitude a number of times, um, which I found very frustrating because I knew that Canada Post could do what I wanted it to do, but the employees downright denied that that was possible, even though I knew it was true. And, and I was right and they were wrong. So that's very frustrating when you're trying to convince someone, no, look, I really, I, I really have already paid for this. I already paid online. All you need to do is print the label. No, that's not possible. You can't pay online. Okay, then what's this receipt? You know, it's that kind of thing. It's frustrating to me, right? Because it feels like a waste of time. It feels like you're not being taken seriously. Anyway, knowing that about myself, I've started to go in with making that type of contract with myself. I will go in, I'm going to face all these things, long lines, inept uh, employees, uh, uh, maybe other frustrations. I want to do that because I need to mail my parcel, but, sorry, I'm fighting a sneeze here. I am one with the force and the force is with me. I fear nothing for all is as the force wills it. Okay, I'm going to do that. I'm going to go into the post office. I will face potentially long lines, ineptitude, frustrations. But I also want to stay calm. Because if I don't, I'm going to be frustrated. I'm going to come back from the post office and be annoyed. And, and I don't want that. So I'm going to do the one, but also the other. Because if I only mail my parcel and I end up being frustrated anyway, then I've done the one, but not the other. And this is a problem. This is a problem. Because now I am unable to do both things. And I want to do both things for my own mental sanity. The other thing that this passage harkened back to for me is um, Marcus Aurelius, who describes, I want to say this is the, I'm confused now, I want to say it's the opening of book two, but it could be book four. In any case, it's it's my, my favorite passage. I have the passage clearly in mind it's not the location. <clears throat> but Marcus Aurelius says this. People seek retreats for themselves everywhere, in the country, in the hills, whatever. But at any point in time, you have the opportunity to retreat within yourself, in your own mind. Be there. There you are safe. There you can be calm. You just have to make it so. And that, I think, is another very, very powerful thing that we tend to forget about. We we do seek those things. Oh, I need to get out. I need to, you know, I need to be out here. I need to be there. I need whatever. Not really. You can be perfectly content where you are. You just need to do that thing. You just need to be content and you can always revert back into your own thoughts. It doesn't work if those thoughts are grossly disordered 
uh, as, as we would say in psychology, and then there are all kinds of things going on, then you may need help, right? But I mean, in principle, again, these are not really videos meant as, as psychologic uh, diagnostic tools. It's more a matter of everyday things, right? And when the, the hustle and bustle of everyday life becomes too much, you can withdraw within yourself. You can take a moment of peace within yourself, close your eyes, maybe listen to some music, do something like that, even if it is for five minutes. It can make a massive difference because you're in your own mental fortress. And I have found that concept, that exercise, the ability to do that, beyond incredibly helpful. It's insane how much of a difference that can make. The realization I can at any point in time go into my own thoughts, my own mind, be there and calm myself. It makes a huge difference. So I fully understand what Seneca is saying here about, yes, you can have all that hustle bus, you can have all these things going on, you can have the, but it's okay because you can rise above that and be okay with yourself, even in a noisy environment. So, I hope this was useful. Let me know what you think. Let me know how you feel. Um, I will see you next time for more talk about stoicism. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.